Hi friends, it's Gwen. Today I want to share with you my Ribsat Round 5 wrap up. I uh, this was my first time participating in Ribsat and it I love readathons because it really helps me take a big chunk off of my reading list and this Readathon was no exception. I absolutely had a blast and I knocked out some huge books that have been sitting on my TBR for a while. And my first book that I tackled was The Hobbit. And I absolutely loved this book. I've been meaning to read it for ever. It's been on my TBR forever. Um, I actually gave it a good tackle um, about two years ago, then about a year ago, and this time I finally had my illustrated edition, which I love and I have shown on several occasions, and I completed this book on the very first day. Not only did I complete The Hobbit, which I gave five stars, of course, but then I picked up Slide because my plan was to read The Hobbit during the day, like every day of Ribsat, and then read different books at night. But I finished this off during the day and I read a little bit of Slide as well. And that was basically day one for me. So for day one, I wrote it down, I read 504 pages. I finished The Hobbit. That was seriously my goal all along, so super happy about that. On day two, I finished up slides. So the first two days, I read a book apiece. So super excited about that. Then, of course, on the third day, I will, after I finished up slide, I picked up Amy Rogers' Epic Detour by Morgan Matson, and I loved this book as well. Um, I started reading Morgan Matson's book with since um, let's see since you've been gone that was the first Morgan Matson book that I read then I picked up this one and I marked all of the playlists in the book and I absolutely loved this one as well the next book that I picked up was a Vampire Academy the first book in the series and again I loved it I finished it in a day what more can I say it was awesome Then I picked up another book that I picked up at a thrift store and it's been sitting on my TBR for a while and that book is Room and I read through this one. It was a little bit more difficult than I thought it was going to be to read. Even though it was written from a five-year-old's perspective, I thought it was slightly unrealistic linguistically and I had a few problems with it so I didn't rate this as high as I did the other books but I'm glad to have finally read it. I went um, down my shelf and what was next? It was The Principal of Uncertainty. And this is a book that I picked up at the free bookstore. You could just go in and take as many books as you want. Um, it's in Baltimore, Maryland. And um, I talked about it before. Um, I forget the name of it. Oh, it's called The Book Thing. And I just picked up this book because of the spine and the cover. And then the um, end papers are pretty cool with this moss. And then the cover is also amazing. And it's really not so much a novel as it is um, illustrated artwork and so forth. So um, I tried to pick it up and I was going to read it, um, but I wasn't able to do that, so I DNF'd this book. Then I picked up a book I just won through like a blog giveaway, and that is Kinder's Cure by Michelle Hawk. And I really wanted to read this book. It's a fantasy book. I mean, as you can tell probably from the cover, the Goodreads reviews have been amazing. And I know it's not really that well known. Um, so I really wanted to give it a go and be able to give it this raving review and everything like that. But you know what? I just couldn't do it. So I DNF'd this. And um, it's a brand new paper paperback copy. Um, I'd love to um, trade it or something like that, but I'm probably going to put it in the book swap book box that I'm getting. It's like going around booktube. Um, yeah, I'm probably either going to put it in that or take it to my book exchange store.
So two books I DNF'd, but I was really happy to get them off of my shelf if I wasn't going to read them. And then the last book that I picked up during Ripset was A Thousand Pieces of You by Claudia Gray. And I just finished this today, so I did finish it after Ribsat. I got about 250-ish pages into it before Ribsat ended for me last night. And I put it down and slept, and then when I woke up, I um, read it while I was, I finished reading it over my morning coffee a little bit before I went to work and then I finished it up this afternoon so I could include it in this wrap up because I did begin it during Ribsat. So like I said I started with The Hobbit on day one and I read a little bit of Slide and I read 504 pages. On day two I finished Slide um, just before 3 p.m. and I read 228 pages because I did start Amy and Roger's Epic Detour. Um, I did mark something in Slide I wanted to talk about. Um, so in it, um, basically this girl has narcolepsy, but she's able to slide into the consciousness of other people and she, a murder takes place and she's trying to investigate that murder by sliding into different people that are around that situation and trying to find out who done it. But um, one of the things in it, um, the guy was talking to her, Zane, and was talking about The Great Gatsby, and she's like, oh, I'm not a huge fan. And he says, let me guess, you read it for English. You had to fill out study guides. At the end, you wrote a five-page paper and had to analyze the characters, the symbols, the theme. Zane shakes his head in disgust. Something like that, I say, nodding. It was only a three-page paper, but still. And then Zane says, God, it pisses me off when teachers suck all the life out of literature. Do me a favor. Read Gatsby again but read it outside under a tree at dusk. It's a completely different experience. Only read a chapter if you want, but give it a shot. Will you do that for me? And that's so true. I was like, oh, if all teachers could read that. I mean, I know it's their job of English teachers to make us read and analyze those things so we have a better understanding of stories and concepts and morals and all of that. But at the same time, it does suck the fun out of reading. And maybe that's why people don't read as much. But anyway, um, I ended up rating this three stars. The third day, 338. Um, 336, sorry. Um, I read Amy and Roger's Epic Detour and I loved it because I had the playlists on Spotify and it was cool to just kind of have that going in the background and then reading this. And I really enjoyed the pictures, the receipts and so forth that they have in the store. Um, then the fourth day I read Vampire Academy. Um, I started about four, um, 7.40 at night, and I read 252 pages. Then I started Room. Um, I really liked Vampire Academy. I only have the first um, book in the series. I wasn't really sure if I was going to like it or not, because I have never read a vampire story before. But I read it, and I loved it, and yes, I want to get the second book at least in the series and kind of make sure that I'm still kind of loving the series. I know people have, like, favorite books in the series but it was just too cute. I really liked it. I really liked the characters. I really liked um, Rose and Lisa's um, like friendship and Dimitri and yeah so I really enjoyed it and I ended up rating it five stars. Um, then I went to Room and I had a lot of problems with Room. Um, a lot of people have talked about Room and said oh my goodness you have to read this and I really think the story like the core of the story is something that everybody should have to experience but being that it's written from a five-year-old perspective the linguistic choices are really, for lack of a better term, dumbed down to a five-year-old level. I don't think that five-year-olds talk like that. Yet, I mean, I'm a kindergarten teacher, so I deal with five-year-olds all the time. And I do work in a preschool with a private kindergarten program, so I actually deal with two, three, four, five, six-year-olds all the time. And I don't know any five-year-olds that talk like that. Now, you can't say that's because of his mother and the situation and all of that, but I just also find that hard to believe because of the mother. I don't really want to say anything else because I don't want to spoil the story, but I just feel like he shouldn't have spoke that way. His voice shouldn't have been that. And I feel like five-year-olds are a lot smarter 
than they portrayed him as. So I was a little disappointed in that. I really enjoyed the story. I really enjoyed the characters and the plot was um, pretty good. It had a couple of, you know, slower moments and stuff like that, but I rated it three stars and I am happy that I read it. And then, um, like I said, I DNF'd two books. And then lastly, I moved on to A Thousand Pieces of You, which Bethany from Bookbound sent me for my birthday. So thanks again, Bethany. Um, it was an excellent book. Um, it was a little hard at first to get into. And I think it wasn't really necessarily the story was hard to get into. It just... The last couple of days of Ribsat was like my three-day weekend, like Memorial Day weekend here in the United States, and I hung out with my sorority sisters like all day on Saturday. All day. And I had so much fun, and I don't regret it at all, but I only read 12 pages on Saturday, and that was like the least amount of pages that I had. And then finally on Sunday, I just, I had so much else going on, and then finally yesterday, I read a big chunk of the book, and I just, I love the story, I love the characters, um, everybody's saying that the time, travel, inter, you know, um, I guess, dimensional um, travel. It's really explained well. The science is explained, but it's not too science-y. Um, it's just kind of explained matter-of-factly, and I really enjoyed that. And um, so in the Firebird series, I don't know if it's going to be a series or a trilogy, but it was the first one in the series slash trilogy, whichever one it's going to be. Um, and I can't wait to get the second one. So those are the books. And then, of course, I have my two books that I DNF'd. So that is a total of eight books that I was able to knock off of my TBR shelf. And if you see my TBR shelf, my books are like, eh, they're all like leaning and there's like this big, huge gap in my bookshelf now. And I'm so excited about it. But really, I just wanted to say thank you to Miranda and the other hosts for hosting Ribsat Round 5. And to all of you who were so supportive throughout Ribsat and running sprints and just, you know, favoriting and stuff like that on Twitter and Instagram and so forth. Um, you can find my Twitter and my Instagram at the outro of the video as usual, but I hope everybody else enjoyed Ribsat as much as I did. I read a lot of five-star books, two three-star books, my three-star books being Slide and Room, but other than that, I really had a lot of five-star reads. I really would recommend these books to anybody. I think they were amazing. And I'm not one to really hand out five stars, like just hand them out. But I really think all these books are deserving of that. But that's really it for today. And I'll see you again soon.